This comes from abroad. And watches working. They are amazed. They can't understand. How can judges work? under such stressful conditions. That was in April this year, well into the already raging judiciary versus executive face-off. Six months on, stagnant judicial appointments mired in debate and procedure linger and linger strong. Poignant appeals have morphed into tough warnings hardly acted on, with the latest the most vicious. One, a direct attack on the PMO threatening to summon officials to explain and some strong language, a lashing out for sitting on recommended names. What are you waiting for? Some change in the system to decimate the judiciary, the Chief Justice said today, hitting out at the government for bringing the judiciary to a grinding halt. Over 450 vacancies in 24 high courts, just 18,000 judges for a population of over 1.2 billion. That's what's at the centre of the judiciary's grouse and is now a flashpoint. If you don't make the appointments after the collegium is cleared, obviously the government is dragging its feet. And if we don't appoint judges in time, justice will inevitably be delayed and be denied, actually. Recommendations for appointments of judges were made by the collegium uh, nine months ago or sometimes even more. Uh, and the government has been sitting on it for nine months with the result that the entire justice delivery system is getting paralyzed. The bigger picture puts the SC rebuke and run-in as part of a long-standing judiciary versus government wrangling on appointment of judges that isn't about to end soon. From a collegium system in 1998 to a statedly more open National Judicial Appointments Commission, NJAC, passed by Parliament in 2014 that the Apex Court rejected last year. Even now, there remains a push and pull on a memorandum of procedure on appointments. The government puts up a respectful garb before the court, but is ready to argue back. When the NJC judgment was delivered, the Supreme Court said that the new memorandum procedure has to be drafted by the central government. I went to the Chief Justice with a letter stating that, Sir, uh, the new memorandum procedure will take some time, so we will have uh, uh, selection of judges till the new memorandum procedure is finalized on the basis of the present memorandum procedure which exists. So we went on. Is it not a magnanimity of the central government? The recurring showdown that appears to be over selection of judges is really about a growing imbalance in separation of power and any solution seems an uphill climb yet. Bureau Report, CNN News 18. All right, the judiciary versus executive debate once again coming to the fore. Joining us on our Talking Point panel tonight, uh, full panel tonight on the show, Subramaniam Swami, BJP MP and lawyer, Soli Surabji, is former Attorney General of India. Justice Ashok Kumar Ganguly, former Judge of the Court of India, will be joined in a moment by Senior Lawyer of the Supreme Court, Prashant Bhushan, and here in our studios, uh, Ashok Bagaria, our legal editor. Uh, let me start with you, uh, Soli Surabji. You know, the Chief Justice of India has been flagging this issue of uh, judicial vacancies in the high judici judiciary as well as across the high courts for a number of months now. Have things come to a head where now, today, the court in its observations even threatening to summon, saying that it's not going to fight shy of summoning PMO officials if they're going to be sitting on this, on this matter? Yeah. <coughs> Mr. Surabji, if you can hear me, have things come to such a pass? Yes, yeah, have things come to such a pass today where the Chief Justice of India has to threaten literally that he will summon PMO officials if they are not seen to be acting fast enough on this issue, on, on the issue of filling up of judicial vacancies in the higher judiciary? Have th things come to such a pass because the government has not been serious about this issue? Uh, you know, sometimes citing procedure, sometimes citing the fact that the NJAC <coughs> Act was, uh, was, was struck down. Uh, has it now become a, a battle of egos between the government and the, and the higher judiciary? No, no, there's no question of egos. The question is, appointments have to be made by the government in time. 
after collegium clears it. If they have any information they think they should give to the collegium, which may affect their judgment about appointing the person or the person, they can do it. But surely it has been done with topmost priority. We have justice as our thing in our preamble to the Constitution. Justice, the value. Now, if we go on this way, if we don't appoint judges in time, naturally, people are going to be their justice for waiting in a long queue. So, the, I don't think the Chief Justice threatened. The Chief Justice really couldn't express himself, I must say, express his indignation, mm -hmm. give a warning. Now, I think nothing wrong in that. The government has to, uh, if there are any differences about member or procedure, sort it out. It's okay. not such an insuperable task. Okay, D Dr. Subramanian Swami, there's a shortage of over 400 judges in the 24 High Courts of India, 478. Uh, there's more than 4,000 vacancies in our different trial courts. Surely, I mean, this is denial of justice, isn't it, if these judge, judge vacancies are not filled up? Well, first of all, I'll make it clear that uh, I'm not here to speak on behalf of the government, although sure. I have had fairly extensive discussion with the Prime Minister on this question. Uh, I have also was a law minister for about seven months in 1991, and a large number of judges were appointed. So I'm a little familiar with the subject. And let me say that uh, the, the, uh, the government in power is answerable to the people, and the uh, judiciary is answerable to the Constitution and acts and to interpret the Constitution. Now, the people who are suffering today are the general public in the country because there are long queues for their cases. And therefore, I think the government should be more flexible in dealing with the needs of the, uh, the demands of the judiciary. And I find that uh, some of our ministers have used phrases like tyranny of the unelected, which was uh, totally uncalled for and it's created a bad atmosphere. I think the, the Prime Minister should call the Chief Justice uh, to a get-together, uh, perhaps at the Chief Justice's house if necessary, and uh, thrash it out. Uh, I have done this when I was a law minister many times when you had a conflict. And yeah. uh, I don't think that this, is, this, this conf confrontation is good for the government, it's good for the country. And I certainly think if you ask me where my sympathy lies, it lies with the judiciary okay. in this particular case. That's very interesting and, and, and that's very interesting you say that. I want to bring in Justice uh, Ganguly. You know, th this issue has been flagged off in public at least by the Chief Justice for the last eight or nine months now, including that infamous instance where he had to, uh, where, he, where he was overcome by emotion. Why then is the government not taking this issue of appointment of judges seriously? Has it, again, I keep going back to that question that I asked Soli Sorabji. Has it become a battle of egos because the government feels that, look, an NJAC Act that was passed by Parliament unanimously was struck down because the judiciary wants to protect its own turf? Look here, if I will say so, with respect, there can't be any question of ego in this situation. I am sure Correct. Mr. Sodabji knows that famous decision of the House of Lords in the case of Roberts versus Hopwood, which says that every executive authority has to act with a due sense of responsibility. That is what is lacking in the government. You see, a crisis was brewing up. If I may say so, in the administration of justice, since this new government is in power, I have nothing against the new government. But this was this was the normal feeling we get, and now it has reached enormous proportions, in view of the fact that more than 487 appointments <coughs> in the in the higher judiciary is vacant. Yeah. Just uh, even taking into account the situation that we have the poorest judge litigation ratio in yes. this country. Yes. In, in no developing country has this poor ratio. But do we have a vibrant constitution? Can you tell me one thing? How do you satisfy the constitutional guarantee of equality of law and equal protection before the law? If your case is not taken up, if your case is not heard, if your case is not decided and kept pending for months, then this will discourage people from going to court. I, I agree with you. I mean, on the streets. Wh which is all the more reason, Justice Ganguly, which is all this the is, more reason is, you, 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 you... Can you consider you, this, <coughs> this is a great threat to the rule of law? 
you you See, you if you know that your cases will never be taken up you you pointed so what out will you do? Well, that is what is happening you you pointed out the abysmal judge to population ratio which is all the more reason why the government yes. should expedite the process of filling up these judicial vacancies particularly in the higher judiciary and also in the in the trial courts i just want to put, put those figures out judge. i just want to put those figures judge, out judge, as we judge, welcome judge. prashant bhushan onto the debate uh, Give me one India, Give India me one as a country. I, I'll come back to I'll come back to you, Justice Gangli, in just a moment. I, I want to bring in Prashant yes, Bhushan. Yes. The Law Commission back in 1987, almost 30 years ago, had said that India as a country needs about 50 judges to per 1 million people. We currently stand about 13 judges per 1 million, which is abysmally low, like Justice Ganguly said, for any uh, developing country. Why then, Prashant Bhushan, is the government not serious enough? in addressing this issue of uh, vacancies in the higher judiciary. No, it's, that's very obvious, you see. A government which does not want any accountability will try and weaken and in fact try and destroy the judiciary, which uh, one of the main jobs of the judiciary under the constitution is to keep the executive and the legislature under check. Uh, that's one of the main functions of the judiciary. And the weaker the judiciary is, the more dysfunctional the judiciary is, the less it is likely to keep the executive and the legislature under check and prevent it from violating the fundamental rights of citizens. Unfortunately, this government uh, and its allied organizations, which are all kinds of senas, etc., have an egregious record of violating fundamental rights of people, of thuggish, even fascist behavior. And therefore, the, this but government sees the judiciary as job. one Politics institution is which is still standing as an independent institution to check the excesses of the executive. And therefore, this government willfully is trying to weaken and destroy the judiciary. And one of the ways of doing that mm. is to render it dysfunctional by not appointing judges. This is precisely what is no, happening. Uh, so, so, yeah, Subramaniam Swami, you want to respond to that? I know you've said at the top of the show that you don't yeah, you don't speak I, for the I government. Think, uh, you know, this <coughs> but but surely yeah, you would want to respond to what Prashant Bhushan said. I don't want politics. Say. Yes, I think it's very bad of him to bring politics into it. The uh, political persuasion of Mr. Prashant Bhushan doesn't allow for democracy. If he, it was his government, there would be no democracy, much less a judiciary. The issue is not that. The issue is how to resolve it. And the, uh, the what do you mean by my government? There in the, uh, yeah, of course, uh, your Naxalite government that you might uh, no, be no, part let's of. Not, let's no, in the let's not get into personal uh, attacks. Let's, yeah, stick the issue, said, let's stick to the issue, please. Let's stick to the issue. Let's stick to the issue, Dr. Swami. Right. Let yeah, him let, stick to the issue. Yeah, the, what did he say about our party the, unnecessarily? No, the issue that we is, don't believe no, no, in the judiciary is, and so on. He should not get into it. Let me therefore say there is a solution. That was discussed, which uh, Fali Nariman also agreed with when the uh, nine judge bench uh, was going to this matter of the judicial, uh, the collegium. And uh, that was that the majority of the members should be from the judiciary. And that I think the government of India should accept. Okay. And once that is accepted, the, the problem is resolved. The only is that some people in my uh, government are insistent that they must have the final say. And I'm sorry, I don't agree. I have been law minister. I know what misuse it can be <coughs> done uh, in appointment of judges if, you have, if the uh, executive has the majority the, uh, power or the ultimate power. Okay, it Ash should Ash be uh, judiciary should have the majority. Okay, Ash Ashok Bagaria, our legal editor, wants to come in. I mean, nobody is arguing, and, and uh, you know, there are eminent lawyers and jurists on this panel. I don't think anybody would say that the collegium system was a perfect system or that it didn't have inadequacies. The question is, instead of bettering that, the government said, okay, let's have this National Judicial Appointments Commission. It was a, an act that was passed unanimously by Parliament. And when it got struck down, I, again, I, I don't want to go back to the phrase battle of egos because <coughs> both Soli Sorabji and Justice Ganguly uh, beg to differ. But the, but the fact is, has it come down to a, to, to, a, to a position where the government is saying that, look, there's too much interference in areas and in turfs that are not necessarily that of the judiciary, and same goes for the judiciary. Well, uh, what I see it as is uh, slightly differently. 
it's actually the problem is the growing mistrust between the judiciary and the government and in fact it's just because of this mistrust on both the sides that there has been a this is a, what I would call it a legendary delay on the part of the executive in putting out the memorandum of procedure it's been nine months yeah. and uh, you know uh, both the government and the judiciary are passing on the back that saying that it's because of you yeah. that we are not able to come up with a memorandum of procedure but at the end of the day who is suffering it's people suffering, uh, yeah. on the street who are suffering no, but, but you said distrust right what's the cause of that distrust where's that distrust coming from well it stems from that uh, NJAC <coughs> judgment which was passed in December because here we have a situation where the judiciary wants to assert its independence because it believes that uh, anything which compromises their independence will amount to compromising the justice delivery mechanism in the country and they are right at that point in time. However, the, ju uh, the government believes that they should also have a say in the appointment of judges. But now nowhere uh, has the judgment drawn a line as to how far the, the government can have yeah. a say. Whereas this government wants that uh, uh, the position should go back to the pre-1992 days. Yeah, you, you know, uh, uh, I, I want to ask this to all the panelists on, on the panel tonight. I'll start with Soli Surabji. Can anybody on this panel say with 100% certainty that nepotism, favoritism doesn't exist in the appointment of uh, judges in the higher judiciary under the collegium system? That the collegium system is a, is a perfectly working system? I mean, sorry, Surabji, let, let me start with you. I mean, you know, it's, it's an open secret in, 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 the, in the legal profession that, you know, judges' sons become judges, lawyers' sons become lawyers. I mean, it's like you scratch my back, I scratch yours. Surely, I mean, there are flaws no, no, in the collegium system. It's a perfect system, but Saka, don't magnify it. That uh, it's a scratch <laughs> your back, I scratch my back. The question is, this is a problem which can be solved. I don't understand if there is any difficulty or matter under a procedure. Well, get together and do it. The trouble is, I, this government's priority <coughs> doesn't seem to be appointment of judges in a short time. I ask you one question: What happens? Rather to say in a short, government must have a voice, but it doesn't have a veto. The final judgment is with the collegium. Okay. And that is how you distract it. So you're saying the crux of the, the, the fight is, is because the government has the wants word? to have, a, a, have the last word on appointments, whereas the judiciary feels that's, that's right. a stepping on their brief. No, no, the government can't have the last word in a matter of appointment of judges. That would really undermine the independence of the judiciary and really affect the structure of the constitution. Okay. I don't think there is any dispute about that. No one can say that. The question is, why don't you sort it out quickly? Why do you treat it as any ordinary matter and let the fight gather dust and then they do it? There's no sense of urgency, I, I'm afraid. No, no, There's no sensitivity to the... Yeah. Just taking on from what Mr. Surabji is saying, in fact, the initiative here should come from both the sides. As, in fact, Mr. Swami suggested uh, that the Prime Minister should call a meeting with the Chief Justice of India and just sort it out, sort it out once and for all, so that these pending uh, vacancies can be filled expeditiously. No, but, but there, there wasn't there an event, I think it was around Independence Day, where the Prime Minister and the Chief Justice were, were on the same... They, they uh, did same, uh, share the same platform. However... I, However, it looks like for the Prime Minister of this country, uh, the appointment of judges doesn't seem to be too high uh, a priority. On, on priority. Is that what it is, Dr. Swami, before I go back to Prashant Boshan and Justice Ganguly? Is appointment of judges no, not are, a high priority for, for, the, for this government? I wouldn't say that. I think we are suffering a bit from the tyranny of the unelectables in our uh, party. <laughs> and uh, I think uh, the Prime Minister needs to uh, be persuaded and I think that's one of the things I'm trying to do to uh, talk, talk directly to the Chief Justice and not in a public function but in, a, in the residence of either of the two and sit till the matter is sorted out and I'm saying the collegium is okay give the majority to the judges three to the judges and two to the government that is government Prime Minister and the leader of the opposition or something like that. W would that and be acceptable though? Would that be acceptable though, Prashant Bhushan, if, if it were that three to two? That has already been argued. 
that has been argued in, uh, as is acceptable to the judges, of course, but in the case of the uh, government, I think we, sh uh, we all should make it acceptable by the government. No, no, but would that be acceptable to the, to the, to the Supreme Court, Prashant Bhushan, three to two, if there are three representatives yes, from the high judiciary and there are two? Already would that be acceptable, Prashant Bhushan? No, no, no. No? That's, that's certainly not acceptable to me. You see, <clears throat> we have been saying for a very long time that one of the problems with appointment of judges is that appointments are being, uh, selections are being made by people who are already very busy, whether they are judges or whether they are law minister, etc. They are not the people who have the time to devote to proper, rational, fair selection of judges. So they, the collegium system is also flawed, is also lacks transparency, etc. But one great merit of the system over the uh, earlier system where the government used to appoint judges was that it uh, makes for more independent judges, judges who are more likely to be independent of the government, which is also extremely important in the scheme of things under the constitution. Unfortunately, you see, uh, in this whole tug of war, it's not an ego problem, etc. It's a clear case where the government wants its own people and would not want independent people to be there in the judiciary. The government does not want any check on unbridled powers that it wants to exercise to crush fundamental rights of people, etc. And that is why they are deliberately Again, holding up inconvenient appointments no, of independent no, no, judges, no, no. etc. This has to be, this has to stop. Okay, uh, you, you, you want to rebut that and I'll go back to Justice Ganguly. Dr. Swami. Yeah, well, why, why, how does he know what the government wants? We are, we are a democratic government, he doesn't know what democracy is. His whole ideology is anti-democratic. We have discussions in our party, yes, it is a fact that at the moment those who have been asserting on the judiciary, they, are, they have had it their way, but it doesn't mean the future they can't be reversed. There are many things we have reversed in the past. Oh, okay. The appointment of um, uh, the uh, Governor Reserve Bank was done not by uh, a desire of some few, few people in the government. Ju ju it was done by the mass opinion in the party. Ju Justice Ganguly, Justice Ganguly, one, one of the con pieces yes, of contention, yes, yes. One, of the, one of the points of contention in this memorandum of procedure is the fact that the government wants a clause there whereby it has the power to reject recommendations from the Collegium on the grounds of quote unquote national interest and the judiciary sees that as stepping on their turf and stepping on their uh, 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 sort of ability to appoint independent minded judges like Prashant Bhushan has been arguing. No, you no, think that is that is fundamentally what, 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 what it boils down to? Justice Gangul. I think you can, you can never assume that the judges who have been appointed under the collegium system had, had did not look after the national interest. Now, what is meant by national interest, it cannot be kept as vague as that for the purpose of scuttling an appointment. I have said in the earlier uh, interviews also, we had a great judge in Justice V. V. R. Krishna Iyer. Yeah. His Lord, she was extremely liberal in many things, even in matters of granting bail, in matters of granting acquittal, in criminal law. Do you think that Justice Krishna Iyer didn't have national interest at his heart? It will be totally uh, uh, absurd to say that. Now, your, the, what is important in the constitution is it must be a government of laws and not of men. Yeah. So this personal choice, this personal uh, sort of, if I may say so, the personal uh, 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 philosophy of a particular political uh, 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 big yeah. wage, can, cannot affect, affect the appointment of judges. It's a constitutional exercise. I say that both the Chief Justice of India and the Prime Minister of India are, su are subject to the constitution. They cannot override the constitution. Yes, First of all, you must accept, the government must accept the NJC judgment. Their judgment is not no longer negotiable through the process of memorandum of procedure. You cannot do that. Secondly, the government must understand the importance and the urgency of appointing judges. The third thing is, in order to resolve the impasse which has developed, unfortunately, I agree with uh, what Mr. Surabhi said and some of you suggested, uh, Mr. Subramanian Sam said, they should meet. They should yeah. meet. There is no difficulty in meeting. The judges used to meet. The, uh, you see the, the Chagla's biography. The people like Chief Justice, Chief Justice Chakla and Moraji used to meet, have discussions. 
Yes, so you're saying it's, it's not unusual. And, and it's, not, it's not unusual for prime ministers and uh, sitting chief justices to meet and resolve issues. So why can't yes, it be no, done? Certainly not. Why certainly can't it be done this, this time? Is a, this is a constitutional. This is a constitutional crisis. As Mr. Okay. Suraji said, that okay. has to be sorted out in the true spirit. What is the question of ego? Do, do you the believe constitution a, does not run on somebody's ego? Okay. Uh, uh, Ashok, Ashok Bagaria covers quotes for us on a daily basis. Do you believe it's possible in the tenure of the current Chief Justice? Well, it, does, it looks very unlikely, but uh, as it's been pointed out repeatedly on this program, that the question or the problem boils down to the uh, thing that it's about the rising mistrust on both the sides. It's the government who's not willing to trust the judiciary with appointment of judges, uh, the judiciary does not want to give away its independence by governmental interference. Now, uh, the judges do have a point, the Supreme Court Collegium has a point that they don't want governmental interference because for so long the yeah. system has really worked well. So there's no point in interfering with it. However, the uh, political executive of this country also has a point when they uh, make a submission saying that when the people of this country can trust us, why can't the people of this country trust us with the appointment of judges so it's a it's a you know it's a complex situation we had we dealing I mean, here it, with. it was an act that was passed unanimously in parliament and, and the government's argument is that you know it's not just one political party that passed the act it was the entire parliament, parliament. And, and parliament is the will of the people but but Sony Surabji you know mm. the point that Justice Ganguly was saying that <coughs> perhaps the government is using this whole negotiation around the memorandum of procedure to try and somehow circumvent the NGAC judgment of uh, October 2015. Do you, do you think that's what it's come down to, that this whole protracted negotiation is basically the government wanting to insert clauses in the memorandum of procedure which would negate the judgment? Now, which clauses? If there are such clauses, they reject them. Look, the question is this. Suppose the government has information about some uh, appointed judge, a person to be involved as a judge, they can certainly give it to the collegium. But if the collegium, after considering it, reiterates his earlier decision, then it must be accepted. So the ultimate thing is, who calls the shots? In matter of appointment of justice, is the judiciary, uh, to my mind, is the best fitted instrument of uh, the agency to do it. And I don't think we should uh, uh, go about this ego tussle and this, that uh, there can't be a matter of ego, where it's a question of appointment of judges, which is so essential for speedy delivery of justice, which is one of the requirements of <coughs> Article 21 of the Constitution. Prashant Dushan, you, you've <coughs> argued this before as well. And do you reckon in hindsight it was a mistake when the Supreme Court gave out the NJAC judgment, it laid the onus on drafting the memorandum of procedure on the government? Instead, if the court were to lay down guidelines for the memorandum of procedure, we perhaps wouldn't have been in the position that we are in today. Yes, I agree with you. It was a mistake for the uh, court to leave it to the government uh, <clears throat> uh, and uh, to uh, allow a memorandum of procedure to be settled between the government and the uh, collegium. I think the uh, court itself, which held the NJAC judgment to be unconstitutional, should have gone a little further and laid down a memorandum of procedure with uh, some amount of transparency in the whole system of selection, etc., uh, which would have led to much less nepotism and uh, better selections. But having said that, that does not mean that the government can use the memorandum of procedure to stall the appointments. Yeah. That is absurd. In fact, what the government, government is just using <coughs> the memorandum of procedure as an excuse to stall independent judges from being appointed they only want their people vetted by uh, their own people uh, and approved by them to be appointed and those are the only persons that they are clearing the rest of the appointments are being well, stalled this despite being new. reiterated some of the names have been reiterated twice by the collegium D dr swami the, the fact is now, I, I, I find it yeah, hard to I, believe no no one sec i yeah. i think prashant bhushan has a point in as much yeah. as the judgment came in October of last year. We're in October of this year. I don't think a memorandum of procedure should take one year uh, to, to be drafted. Listen, I started by saying that my sympathy is with the judiciary. But let me correct you on certain things. 
there is no such thing as a parliament unanimously passing something and therefore the Supreme Court should accept it. They, it's very clear from the basic structure judgment onwards that uh, parliament is a creature of the constitution and the uh, sole responsibility and right rests with the Supreme Court to interpret whether it is constitutional or not. The, this present crisis, uh, maybe the judges are uh, sticking, uh, uh, sticking it out, but the fact of the matter is that it is the responsibility of government which is elected by the people to uh, be uh, accommodative, uh, sit down and find out. And I am telling you in the proceedings of the uh, NJAC matter, the, uh, the Supreme Court had, uh, had a discussion when uh, I think uh, Nariman as an amicus curiae or otherwise, I don't know what capacity was there. He had um, made that and uh, comment that if the majority of the uh, collegium is uh, of judges and uh, the government has a representative and the opposition also has, uh, that would be acceptable and that was the consensus and that is the only way you can come out of this and Anyway, we are, long, we are a long way off from that. Uh, answer my question and the, the point that Prashant Bhushan made was that the government is using this whole uh, dialogue on memorandum of procedure. First of all, it shouldn't take a year for you to draft a memorandum of procedure but it's basically using that to delay the appointment well, of judges because you want to appoint judges who are amenable to you. No, you see, the problem with uh, Prashant Bhushan is he overstates everything. This government is not a monolith. It's, uh, there are uh, people who have taken uh, the responsibility in the first two and a half years of deciding uh, who will be judges, who will not be judges, and they want this power. <coughs> yes, there is a, f a faction which uh, wants to uh, overpower the judiciary. But I think that will change and uh, the judges should also uh, stick their hand out uh, in conciliatory way with the Prime Minister. I have uh, had a talk with the Prime Minister and I can tell you that their compromise with the, uh, on this issue is possible with him. Okay. He is not rigid, but there is no doubt that there is a, as I told you, the tyranny of the unelectables okay. who I'm are creating all this I'm problem. Going to, I'm going to, get, to get a quick uh, round of closing comments. I asked Ashok this, whether, this is po whether there will be a resolution to this issue in the tenure of at least the current Chief Justice, and he reckons no. But Soli Sarabji, what's the way out? I mean, is, is it, as Dr. Swami is arguing, going back to the, to the Fali Nariman formula, as he says, uh, of having three representatives from the judiciary and two uh, from, 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 from the legislature, would that be, would that be the only resolution to this? Well, it may not be the only resolution. This is one of the ways. But the important thing is, ultimately, the voice of the judiciary must prevail. That's the basic thing. And I don't think we, we shouldn't make too much of it. I don't think it's an insoluble problem. I agree, the Prime Minister, the Chief Justice will certainly meet and discuss. But the trouble is, I think the government's priority appointment of judges <coughs> doesn't seem to be as important as other things. Okay, let me ask it's you straight. Like any other file. Let, 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 let me ask you straight. You're Sorry? one of the most eminent jurists in this country. If the government were to ask you to play mediator, would you be open to it? Certainly well, you should I think do it. Certainly you should do I it. may be open to it, but others may so, not. No, 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 <laughs> Mr. Mr. Your Surabji, judiciary is very safe in his hands. Okay. <laughs> I was an ex judge, I know it. He was also <laughs> He was also I Attorney General of the NDA in the first... Uh, that's why, yes, that's why yes. I asked him. There's a, there's a very good reason that I asked him. If the government were to ask you to play mediator, request you to play mediator, <coughs> you wouldn't be closed to the, to the, to the proposal, that Mr. Will, that will resolve the issue. Mr. Sarabji. It will resolve the issue. Look, don't make me blush. I don't know whether you can <laughs> see me. The red colors to my thing. No, no, seriously. Is not an insoluble problem, but it must be solved quickly, expeditiously. Don't leave it like other files just on the table, we we'll need it in our own time. No, because if you deny, if there is delay in appointment of able judges, obviously there is denial of justice. If there's denial of justice, the rule of law is affected. Okay. And other consequences quick, follow. Quick, quick closing comments, Justice Ganguly and Prashant Bhushan. Do you, do you see this yes, being yes. resolved in the near future? And if so, how? Okay. What comments? I tell you one thing. Hello. Yes, yes. We can, well, we can hear uh, you. Go on. I, I, I would, I, as one comment, the, the thing which has uh, uh, stirred this discussion is that the Chief Justice of India has 
threatened to summon PMO officials. That's right. This is nothing new. I I can I can uh, I think both uh, Swami and uh, Prasant Bhushan would remember when I was a judge. We we yeah. directed the PMO to file an affidavit explaining the delay in the matter of granting right. sanction to prosecute sanction. Raja, and they That's filed right. that. Yeah. The PMO PMO uh, does not enter in, 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 in immunity. Thing. Yes, yes, they know it. They okay. were they were appearing. <laughs> so it's, it's it's happened so before. The, so therefore yes. they did it. So it has happened that PMO filing an affidavit is explaining the delay. Okay. Whether it explained or not, that's a question. But they filed it. So they are subject to the uh, Supreme Court. Okay. You uh, know, what is what is stalling the whole thing? I tell you one thing. What is stalling is that people. Like Suli Sorabji, should be should be kept in this business to resolve the conflict. Mr. Sorabji, uh, uh, everybody knows in this in this country, his knowledge of constitution, his knowledge of uh, judicial appointment is far deeper than anybody else in this in this country. Just because I am a prime minister, I cannot I cannot deny his wise counsel. This is, that should be the, the prime minister should consult people like him. To take that advice, <coughs> so how to go about it? What is wrong? Where is the question of ego? Okay, uh, I think that's a fair point. I, I think that's a fair point. I, I, I would never, I would never appeal to the honourable prime minister, to and, and to the under the government, as such, to to shed their ego if any, and to resolve the matter in the best constitutional way which is possible. Time is running out fast. Okay, uh, Prashant Bhushan, final word. Your constitution, constitution is getting getting defaced and defied. Okay, I, got, got I, would, I, I, I would suggest, I would suggest that Sorabji and Ganguly both should be uh, consulted by the prime minister. <laughs> no, 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 okay, no. fair enough. I am far too small a fry. F fair enough, but but final word, Prashant Bhushan. I've got to close. Yeah. Zaka, this is not a matter which can be resolved by. Uh, give and take or negotiation that you have two people of ours and let's have two people of the government, etc. Mm. The law no, has no, been settled. It's very clear. Principle. It says that the judges yes, will have to be principle. selected by the by the collegium, and if the government stalls yes, that, yes. they can only send it back once for reconsideration within a limited time. They can't yes. sit on it. After that, if the collegium reiterates. Those recommendations unanimously, the government has to appoint those people. The time has come yeah, for the, the judiciary. Many the of these uh, appointments have been reiterated twice by the collegium, and the time has come for the uh, judiciary to assert itself judicially and issue a mandamus to the government to make these appointments forthwith. Okay. I think too much time has been wasted in this kind of uh, uh, attempt to negotiate or attempt to placate etc. This is not a question of placation of the government and uh, settling their ego etc. It's a matter of fundamental rights of the people which need to be protected by the judiciary and the judiciary must now right. put its foot down and issue a mandamus to the government to make these appointments. Okay, uh, between these two extremes, b between issuing a mandamus to the government or having somebody to mediate uh, with the judiciary, we'll see. Uh, how this issue resolves itself over the next uh, six months or so. But thank you very much. Fascinating conversation. Uh, Ashok Bhagadiya, Dr. Subramanian yeah. Swami, Prashant Bhushan, uh, former Justice Ganguly and Soli Sorabji. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.